I'll bring this meeting to the Alexander County Board of Commissioners to order. Um, <clears throat> I call on uh, Commissioner Dale Robertson to lead us in the invocation and Commissioner Larry Yoder to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. All rise. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the blessings of life which we enjoy. We're thankful for the plans you have set down for man to live by. And as we pause this evening, we pray that we might be more aware and more mindful of the direction you have set for mankind. And Father, we pray that the decisions that are made from this county level to the state level to the national level might be more in line with the goals and directions and plans that you laid out for your people to be happy, secure, and prosperous. Father, as we conduct this meeting tonight, we pray that the decisions that are made here might be for the benefit of the citizens of Alexander County. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Attention. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, you have the uh, agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. I was getting ready to skip over something. Uh, commissioner's report. Uh, do any commissioners have anything they'd like to report? Uh, Judy's got something she wanted to say, and I got something I want to say. So, okay. ladies first. Uh, I would just like to comment on uh, this being February, which is Heart Month, and that's something that's near and dear to me. Uh, i just like to uh, encourage everybody to take good care of their heart because they only have one and you can't live without it. Uh, <coughs> heart disease is the number one killer of women. I didn't always know that, but uh, it is. Uh, we, have a, we have been blessed in this county with a wonderful facility <coughs> to uh, help our heart, and that's the YMCA. And I would like to encourage all, men and women, young and old, to go out and check it out because it's a wonderful facility. The staff is very friendly. It's a happy place to be. And I'm sure your heart will be happy you're there. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, there's a, uh, an item that I saw in the news last week and I'm going to pull it up, print it out, and study it a little bit, but uh, the title of it's Agenda 21. It was created by the United Nations. It has been signed by presidents of both political parties, and average Americans need to be aware of Agenda 21, and I think understand, need to understand a little bit about uh, what's contained within it, and uh, uh, begin talking about it to our friends, neighbors, and to those who are running for public office because uh, uh, I've got just a, a bird's eye view of it, but uh, it started out as a uh, plan by the United Nations to uh, improve the environment, and now it has been further extended to uh, uh, social structures and economic structures and so on, and uh, it's one of those things that uh, uh, goes on and we don't hear much about it, but it's Agenda 21. It is a United Nations plan, and uh, as I get more of it uh, printed out, I will share it with you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the agenda is before you. I believe we have two changes to make. Uh, item number two, the uh, sheriff is unable to be here. He is sick. And item number three, uh, we don't have all the information, uh, the changes on the amendment. So I move that we uh, delete those two items from the agenda. I second. Um, got a motion and a second. Is there any um, discussion? There being none, all those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, motion passes unanimously. All right, the uh, first item on the agenda is public comment. Jamie, has anyone signed up for? Nancy Coley. Nancy Coley. Okay. Thank you for the time to talk about two housing rehabilitation grants 
This is not a public hearing. The next meeting we will have a public hearing for the scattered site housing project. But I just wanted to tell you and the public, even though it has been on the government channel too, um, of the availability of funds. And if we can just help even one person that might not have known about this and would hear about it from at this meeting, then we will have done a good thing. Um, every three years, Alexander County gets $400,000 in community development block grants to rehabilitate homes that are owned and occupied. Now, I've had right many calls, but they, they don't necessarily own the home. It has to be owner-occupied. Uh, and, and also, it's income-based. They have to be low-income citizens. And the income and the severity of need will determine the eligibility. Um, I'm not going to give the figures. That's just confusing. If anybody's interested, they can call me. Manufactured housing or mobile homes can't be rehabbed with this money unless they've been converted into real property, meaning the title has been turned in and the tax office is uh, taxing them as real property. Um, if anybody thinks they might be interested, I think one of the things that is keeping people from uh, applying for this is that it's a deferred loan. It's a grant to the county, but it's a deferred loan to the people, meaning that we do put a deed of trust against the property. The amount, the maximum amount of time, and that uh, is if we spend $20,000 or more, is eight years. And all this means is, I tell the people, the county doesn't want their property, the commissioners don't want their property. It's just a protection to make sure they don't sell it and get a benefit from the profit. Um, the only way that deed of trust is triggered would be if they sold the property and they are to re, um, live there as the principal residence. So that's one project. At the next meeting, we'll have a public hearing. Um, the Western Piedmont Council of Governments has a single family rehabilitation program. And we've done two homes and we need to do two more. Now these houses have to be a little bit better shape than the scattered site. The uh, emphasis on this is energy. And the people can have a little bit more income. They can be moderate income. Um, we can spend up to $45,000 on a house. And when we finish, it is supposed to be in such good shape that it's comparable to a new dwelling. Um, as I said, energy is the emphasis on this. Um, we only have until uh, June to find the two more houses and get them under contract. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak, and I won't take any more time because I know. Yes, sir. I, I just wanted to ask you one question. <clears throat> Let me repeat back what you said. You, for the scattered site, you have to own the home. Yes. Uh, low income, yes. no manufactured homes unless it's real property. Right. Um, but the $20,000 or more is for eight years. Deed and of trust. that that deed of trust, is it forgiven after those after eight, years? eight years? Okay, so yes. they do not have to pay it back. It's no. just- As uh, long as they live in the home. Yeah, well, just, just to keep them there so they don't actually sell it and make a profit. That's right, Okay. that's right. Okay. All right, Any, thank you, Nancy. Uh-huh, thank you. Uh, uh, Jamie, has anyone else signed up? The, uh, this is a public hearing. Does anyone, or uh, public comment, does anyone wish to speak in the audience? Okay. Uh, we will move on to item number four on the agenda, solid waste disposal ordinance amendments and call on Seth Harris, the county planner. Thank you very much. I thought I would come before you tonight and give you an update on the activities of the minimum housing committee. We have met twice now and discussed different things. Uh, one of the first items the committee decided to tackle was changes to the solid waste ordinance. And that's what's before you tonight. I'm gonna hit some, hit some highlights here. Some of the things we've been discussing changing in that ordinance. Just overall, the ordinance needs a general updating and cleaning up to bring it up to date with current county policies and practices. The best I could tell the last time it was updated was <coughs> 1997. So it was in a desperate need of updating. One of the things we changed was uh, it mentioned county bulk containers, which were the old green boxes that sat around the county. We changed that to convenience centers. We changed the landfill, the mention of the landfill site to transfer station because the county no longer operates a sanitary landfill. 
several times in the ordinance, it mentioned the county administrator and his or her, her authorized representative. We changed that to solid waste enforcement officer. We made the section regarding junk consistent with the zoning ordinance. We broadened the violation penalties to be, cons to be consistent with general statutes. And we added recycling requirements so they were consistent with general statutes. We updated on the section on appropriate containers to be consistent and up to date with other counties such as Iredell County, Henderson County, Rutherford County, and Rock Rockingham County were all places we pulled ordinances from. We also changed requirements for multiple residential units to specify manufactured home parks, duplexes, apartments, and condominiums. And another big change is we added a section on casualty damage solid waste, which addresses homes damaged by fire, storm, et cetera. That casualty damage solid waste basically means a loss of property because of a sudden unforeseen event. And that's a highlight of the changes we're working on. Does anybody have any questions? Seth, I'd just ask if, if anyone watching or listening has any questions about this ordinance, where can they obtain a copy? Is it online on the county website it's or do they need to call you? They can call me and I can get a copy for them. Okay. I was thinking in the same direction Berkey was, uh, how much trouble would it be to get it on the county website where people would review it and also at county offices uh, and buildings so that uh, it'd be readily available. And of course, Michael printed in the Tattlesville Times for us this week. That'll be easily, <laughs> easily done. No problem making that draft ordinance available, if that's what you wished. I, I think I think we need to. Yeah, I do too. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah, can do that. There are some, uh, I'd say, major changes to it, so people need to be aware of it. Right. And of course, it does have to. There's still some work that needs to be done on it, and it would have to come again before the commissioners for final approval at a public hearing. So. Well, do we want to wait until we have actually approved it, in case we have to do a rerun? <laughs> No, I, I wouldn't think so. Would you not have to have a public hearing on this in order to approve it? Yeah, to approve oh, yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I thought. But I, I would go the, ahead and put it out for comment so uh, people, you may get some real good uh, feedback on things to include or yep. wordings and agree. concerns. So. I agree. Okay. okay. Any questions? Any more? All right. Thank you, Seth. Sure. <clears throat> Item number five on the agenda, um, scheduled February 20th work session. I call on Rick French, County Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as uh, in our schedule, we need to schedule a work session for February the 20th at 6 p.m. at the County Administration Building, um, discuss projects and some financial matters. And again, that's a meeting that's open to the public, but it's a work session. We need to schedule it uh, for February the 20th, which will be uh, the third Monday. Okay. Uh, what do you guys? Move to set the meeting for the work session for uh, February 20th <coughs> at 6 p.m. Second. Got a motion and a second. Is there any uh, discussion? Just for the board's information, I will not be present. Okay. Um, anything else? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed? Motion carries four to one. Well, I'm not going to be there. I might as well vote against it. I couldn't be there. <laughs> Jamie won't be there either. I probably won't be there either. You probably won't be there either. Ah, <laughs> uh, we hope, right? <clears throat> I'm going to be out of town. I, that's why I'm not going to be there. We've already uh, made plans to be gone for about nine days. Uh, so, I was going to say we could postpone uh, it. But go ahead. It's fine. Uh, if if you were traveling and thinking about us at a meeting, that make your trip better. I really don't think I'll be thinking <laughs> okay. about you. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against anybody though. Uh, item number six on the agenda: board appointments and reappointments. Call on Rick French, County Manager. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman, uh, for appointments to the Criminal Justice Partnership Advisory Board. One year reappoint Tammy Lippard, Tony Jones, Rick French, and Sarah Kirkman. Library Board appoint three-year terms, Jenny Masters, Commissioner Berkey Jennings, Maggie Breeden-Taylor, Sister Cities appointment for one year, reappoint Dwight Shook, 
and David Eisenhower as the alternate. The board, the Equalization Review Board, reappoint Patsy Little, David Odom, Doug Ramsey, Linda Barnett, and Sue Watts as an alternate for one-year terms. And then commissioner appointments, appoint Commissioner Jennings to Finance Committee, <coughs> appoint Commissioner Moose to Personnel Committee and Voluntary Farmland Preservation Board, as well as the Commissioner's Task Force. Move Is to there, approve the appointments. We got a motion. Is there a second? I second it. Got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, motion carries unanimously. Item number seven on the agenda is uh, budget ordinance amendments number 26, number 27, and number 28, calling Rick French, county manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Budget amendment number 26 is to increase the sheriff's department budget for the Santa Cop donations that were received and to increase the health department budget for bonus funds for family planning. Budget amendment number 27 is to reimburse the general fund for expenditures made in the 2010-2011 that were eligible to be paid from the emergency 911 fund. And budget amendment number 28 is to use funds set aside for major repairs to county buildings, which is to reroute the Taylorsville EMS base and the Bethlehem Library building and to be accounted for in the general fund rather than the capital projects fund since no new capital asset uh, result from the expenditures. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion? Move, move to approve. Second. You got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, motion carries unanimously. Uh, item number eight on the agenda is the county manager's report. Calling Rick French, county manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a couple of things to update you on. Uh, one, I want to give a brief update on the sales taxes uh, for five months. Uh, we're still running a little bit ahead of the budgeted uh, amount. Uh, so far, we've collected $1,451,119. Uh, and we had budgeted $3,258,200. We're about 3% ahead of that number. Uh, all articles, Article 39, 40, and Article 46 are running ahead of the schedule, which is a good thing. If you compare this year's sales tax that have been collected to last year's, uh, uh, this year, again, we're $141,414 ahead. Last year, we were at our sales tax totaled $1,309,704. Um, so, but of that 141, the hold harmless is 51,715. So, but we're still ahead. So I just want to provide that brief update on sales taxes. So we're still running a little bit ahead. Um, tomorrow, February 7th from 1130 to one o'clock is the Alexander County annual chamber banquet and several of you have signed up to attend just want to mention that uh, and also february 21st is the reception for the retiring alexander county S school superintendent jack hoke and uh, many of you have, have, are going to attend that also and i'll be glad to answer any questions mr chairman yeah. well mr chairman one comment uh, rick just mentioned that uh Jack Hoke's retiring as uh, superintendent of schools in Alexander County at the end of February. And uh, uh, Jack and Rick, as county manager, have worked very well together, keeping both boards informed of what was going on. And uh, uh, several years ago, we had a meeting, and it was surprising. Other counties were surprised that commissioners and school board members sat down and talked to each other about things that were budget and actually planned and worked together on how to do things. And uh, uh, Jack, of course, is retiring, but I do appreciate the work he did uh, while he was here with Alexander County Schools. Uh, one thing, and, and Larry, you'll say uh, uh, per capita, but uh, the sales tax uh, the Article 40 and 42 tax, about a half cent of that sales tax 
uh, went to the school system as uh, capital improvement funds. That half cent sales tax, uh, the commissioners and the school board agreed that uh, that would be used for capital improvements to the school system. And the school projects that have been done in Alexander County that required financing uh, have been supported by that half cent sales tax. And it was a great plan. Other counties came, they modeled their programs after what was going on here. And then uh, the General Assembly decided that the Article 42 tax ought to become a point of sale tax, which just destroyed uh, a good plan that we had. But uh, uh, Jack, uh, uh, and, and you never had to, to wonder if Jack knew where his budget was or where his money was. Uh, he always uh, had it right up here, and if he didn't have it there, he'd have it written down in two or three places. But Jack looked after uh, the business of the schools. He looked after the finance of the schools, and in turn, that's reflected in the facilities we have. It's also reflected in the fact that with the budget cuts the state of North Carolina has done, Alexander County Schools have not been impacted uh, as greatly because Jack and the school board planned ahead uh, for those cuts. And uh, wish Jack the very best uh, with his retirement, but uh, we also appreciate the work he's done for uh, Alexander County Schools and for the, especially for the children of Alexander County. Thank you, Commissioner Robertson. <clears throat> um, the consent agenda. Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. Uh, is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, motion passes unanimously. We will now go into a uh, closed session. Um, I'm missing. <laughs> Uh, per North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11 uh, to prevent disclosure of confidential information, economic development, contractual, and personnel. And I make that in the form of a motion. Second. Got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, motion carries unanimously.